Uh, hi, I'm Srivats. I work for Qualcomm. I want to share some of, uh, some of the device assignment scenarios we have in our embedded products, how we are doing it currently in the products, uh, and, and um, I have studied some of the upstream frameworks and have some observations uh, on which I, I want some, uh, I want your feedback, right? I mean, whether uh, yeah, the upstream framework needs some changes or we can adapt it, uh, you know, uh, without uh, any changes. So that's the kind of feedback I'm hoping to get. Um, so uh, just to set the context, um, the, what I've shown there uh, in the picture is two VMs. Uh, one is uh, untrusted, so this, is, could, this could be your phone. For example, right? I mean, the, the Android uh, that comes up, that's the first uh, host VM. Uh, it's considered untrusted because uh, it's, um, you know, bad actors uh, could be lurking there. So uh, we don't want the, that uh, untrusted ho host OS to be handling some sensitive operations. So to give you an example, uh, consider your mobile banking app, right? Uh, a part of the app that comes up uh, where the user ID and password needs to be verified, uh, we don't, I mean, the application designer may not want that to be done in Android context. So what we typically do is that part of the application where the screen shows, you know, uh, the user ID and uh, user needs to enter, that uh, part uh, of the application, the control of display and touch screen goes to another VM. Uh, which uh, which is uh, isolated from the uh, Android, uh, from the host OS, and uh, it will verify in a secure manner. And once it gives the green signal, the rest of the application can run uh, in, in the untrusted uh, host OS, right? I mean, so uh, in this context, there, there, is, there is a requirement that we have to temporarily uh, reassign uh, ownership of uh, devices like display and touch screen to another VM, right? So the te it's temporary because uh, uh, you know e either of the VM does not own the device uh, for its lifetime, um, and the latency of ownership transfer has to be low, right? I mean, I'm told low could be in few milliseconds. Um, how we are doing it currently in downstream uh, is uh, you know uh, uh, the host driver which controls the uh, let's say the display it transfers uh, ownership of the IO regions and the IRQs using hypervisor specific APIs, right? Uh, and uh, any subsequent uh, uh, request by uh, applications talking to the driver is rejected, right? And uh, the most important point there is the device power is uh, retained, right? I mean, so that when the guest starts uh, acting on it, acting on the device, uh, much of the device power, everything is uh, set up and uh, it starts programming the hardware uh, to display whatever it wants, right? Um, and, and, uh, and the other thing we have done in the guest is at boot up, uh, when it boots up, the driver, uh, driver probe is modified not to actually touch the device because it doesn't have ownership of the device uh, at that time. Um, so, uh, so this is how it is done in downstream and, and I've looked at how it might be um, required to be done in an upstream friendly way, I mean using let's say VFIO, right? I mean from what I understand we'll have to, uh, on the host side, we'll have to unbind from the native driver, right? And reassign, uh, bind it to the VFIO platform driver which can then assign it to the target VM. And, and on the guest side, uh, we'll have to bind it, uh, once the guest gets a notification that it has ownership of the device, it'll have to bind it to the um, uh, native driver on the, on the guest. So, so could I make a suggestion? Yeah. Um, you have a trusted hypervisor here, right? Yes. That's, and it's doing like a switch. It says, you know, the untrusted gets to touch it or the trusted gets to trust it so that you have Yes, the hypervisor trust. is trusted in our case. So I would suggest you expose two devices to the VMM world, one for the, or is your trusted hypervisor running VFIO in this case? No, the, 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 uh, the, it's not uh, KVM. We are using a Type it, 1 so hypervisor. So it, it, is, it is really like a, a secure environment outside yes. of Linux. Yes. So why don't you have it expose two devices to your VMM world that's running KVM? One that's for the untrusted and one that's for the trusted. The two devices can share the same hardware, but when you trigger the switch in your hypervisor, it turns one off and the other on. Then you never have to unbind drivers and you have the experience that you're after and you can still use all the infrastructure we have. Um, don't you want some constraint 
to tell the driver on the host that it no longer has uh, control over the display so that I mean I assume you would do that in some way in your driver yeah, right? we would do it in a downstream way but what would be the upstream well, no, way of doing it I don't mean a it? downstream way I mean your driver would talk to the hypervisor and the hypervisor would tell it sorry I'm taking the device away from you right okay so you don't um, need uh, any you know generic interfaces in the driver to say that it no longer controls the you know we you know if we are putting a request uh, to to make it go dormant i'm wondering about the initialization part of it that it's all confusing to me how you take a display drive while still running it it's a live display that we are transferring yeah i mean they're, they're effectively wanting to implement a hot plug for platform devices to do this so well, take it away and the driver knows about it bring it back and the driver reinitializes it it's not hot plug there it, it doesn't sound like hot plug because the device <laughs> keeps working the whole time you just like somebody else gets to paint over the display for a little while so like I assume that it's suspended in some well-known state so that the yes, trusted it goes VM dormant. knows that like I can blit to this memory and it'll show up as pixels. Right? So it's not really a hot plug. It's like I'm uh, just uh, like, Yeah. I mean we so, we could do hot plug, but that will not good look good on the user experience, right? I mean if if we do, you know, unbind and go down that path, it'll effectively turn off the display and you know right. you don't want the screen blanking right. yes. I mean, even that, for a millisecond. That's what yes. I'm saying. Like my, my suggestion is is you have your your display driver, you have some option in it where you say, okay, you know, get ready to go to the trusted mode and it does whatever it needs to, you know, set up to make it usable by trusted and it goes and tells the hypervisor, okay, trusted mode, good to go. And the hypervisor just turns on the, the VM and right. It's but but the thing is, the driver itself doesn't decide on this transition. The the trigger to transition comes from application. Which application? Uh, it could be any application, right? I mean, in this case, it was a mobile banking application, and somewhere in the framework, when it decides that the control of the display needs to transition. Oh, so, but you're still you're running in the hypervisor environment, or you're running in an environment where you could tell the driver, aren't you? It will be in, in the application. So how does the application? Okay, it does some I call. Some I yeah. Apple, okay. Yeah, yeah, or whatever, SysFS, whatever, system call of some kind. Okay, there's no generic driver framework needed, you think, that could solve this problem generically for all drivers? I mean, isn't this akin to a power management event in the sense of, like, you're suspending untrusted, you're resuming in trusted world, and then you're suspending out of, back and forth? So, essentially, have a driver to application specific uh, interface uh, to handle this on a driver device to di device uh, basis. It's a thought. Okay, sure. Um, okay, uh, fair enough. Uh, and, and the second point uh, related to this is about um, validation, right? I mean, uh, yeah, how, you know, how does the guest driver know that it got ownership of the right uh, IO regions, for example, right? And uh, for that, uh, we are doing it in a, in a way where um, yeah, the guest driver uh, assumes identity mapping between the IPA to PA uh, as of now. And uh, what it does is uh, when, it gets to, when, when it gets a notification that it has uh, now uh, received ownership of certain IO regions, um, it verifies against a, um, a configuration it, it would have received at boot up, right? I mean, the device tree in, in, the, in the guest case is signed, uh, it's tamper proof. So at boot up, it knows what IO regions to expect, right? And uh, when it gets a notification that uh, it has ownership of those devices, uh, it verifies whether it matches what, uh, what uh, it uh, learned at boot up. Uh, right. So uh, this, 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 what you've got on your slide is very similar to what the confidential compute people are doing. Yes, they're yes. doing all the same stuff. It would be so nice if you guys could like agree on APIs and a strategy yeah. for this. Um, but like, I, what, what I think will happen in confidential compute is that the IO MMU drivers, before it adopts these hardwares, will have to go and validate some of the things. Right. And, and other places will have to put in this validation. Right. So, I mean, uh, uh, I'd like to introduce David uh, there sitting there, right? I mean, he's having a talk on uh, Friday, right? I mean, David, where he's uh, uh, proposing we extend TDISP, uh, you know, currently written for PCA devices uh, to cover platform devices also, right? I mean, and, and uh, you know, so he would like to get some feedback. So, but I don't want to spend more time in this but, talk. But TDISP is different than 
than what you're talking about here. This is, this is I have to, I'm a secure VM and I have to talk to my trusted secure hypervisor through a trusted secure path and confirm that the stuff that device tree told me matches with the secure VM yes. actually set yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. So the device tree is the downstream solution, but if there is something like an upstream framework where it can... Well, the upstream approach has been we don't trust the device tree. We, like, we're not doing signed device tree or anything like that. Mm -hmm. We're going to read the device tree information, and then what I hear people doing is they'll make special calls to the secure world to say, device tree told me this, is it correct? Mm. Right, and it's like an attestation phase. Sure. But. Yeah, it, 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 it rhymes with what we're doing with, with TDISP. Like, yeah, it, like, as long as you have a, a trusted way to say, like, am I talking to the thing I'm supposed to be talking to, then exactly. whether it's TDISP or whether it's, or whether it's like this kind of homegrown solution, I, I think it would, it would go through the same entry points to the... Yeah, it's not SPDM either, even in the upstream. Like, you start up an IOMMU driver, there's no PCI device, there's no TDISP, you still have to make sure that the IOMMU driver that ACPI described is, in fact, the trusted IOMMU hardware that... SPDM not just for transport, just the device support SPDM. But it, it, it doesn't, right? It doesn't have to be PCI, I mean... Even IOMMU, embedded IOMMU. But at least for the device authentication part of it. You have to authenticate the IOMMU platform hardware, too. Well, yeah. So but... We need a solution without TDIS and SPDM. Okay. Okay, uh, I guess, uh, David, you got some feedback, but uh, more uh, in your talk, I think, right? So I'll move on to the next, uh, I have... Five uh, minutes. Five minutes? Yeah. Okay. So I'll talk about this, uh, you know, two problems that I felt was important that I wanted some feedback. Uh, one was on um, uh, PCI uh, device assignment for this trusted VMs, where the PCI device does not have uh, hardware support like TDISP, right? So right now, what we are thinking uh, is uh, the hypervisor, uh, which is a uh, uh, type one hypervisor, would emulate one root complex, right? I mean, and uh, VMM has no visibility uh, into what devices are advertised on that root complex. And the hypervisor, because it's trusted, it will um, uh, you know, ensure that the right uh, configuration is presented for the, uh, uh, for the devices, right? And uh, so whether, you know, there's uh, any concerns there, I, I want some feedback, but not necessarily now. The other thing is uh, the device sanitization upon VM termination, right? I mean, so some of these devices could have uh, confidential information. Uh, we don't want uh, if the VM crashes for whatever reason, right? I mean, it could be because the VMM itself has crashed uh, or the, there is some bug in the VM that makes it uh, crash. Right, so before we tear down the VM, we want to ensure the device state is sanitized. And the approach uh, from PKVM right now is to have some uh, driver parts, driver stubs at EL2 to handle this uh, sanitization, right? And um, I, I, we think, you know, uh, putting all the driver uh, stuff at EL2 could really make it bloated. Um, yeah, uh, and, and, and whether that's the, right path for all kind of devices that we might have, uh, you know, in an associate, you know, think about camera, think about, uh, you know, DSPs, right? I mean, you know, the, uh, so, you know, having to, you know, ha having to, uh, for example, we don't know what, what state of, uh, uh, whether the power is turned on to the device, right? So uh, maybe one option we are thinking is uh, a trusted service VM, uh, which can handle, <laughs> all the uh, complex parts uh, of device sanitization and the hypervisor just talks to it. I mean, yeah, th this is where you're really missing TDIS because I, I don't see how you crash and trust the crashing thing to clean up. Um, like, like when TDIS, when the device goes into error state, it, the device is supposed to clean up itself and at least, at least clear up all the confidential information. So but uh, these are not necessarily PCI devices only. It could be platform devices. I mean, like, it, the, may, but it's a, it sounds it's more it's a device problem, not a driver problem. So it's like, hey, we we lost we lost secure context. Drop your confidential state. Standards like TDS for PCI, they can't do an FLR, so they have to put a driver someplace to do whatever their weird hardware needs to clearing itself. And it has to be trusted because it's part of the trusted state machine. So. No, yeah. no, no, no. The, the trusted hypervisor does it. 
Yeah, yeah. It doesn't. The oh, trusted hypervisor does it, but only thing is, you know, that these uh, dr driver can really get complex as you deal with more uh, complex devices. Well, I think so. I mean, if you're worried about adding a reset logic to your hy hypervisor, I feel like your device is poorly designed, right? Like, like a reset for a device should be like write the reset register kind of thing. Like, it, yeah, it shouldn't be. Um, I I mean, reset method well, they're, help they're, with this. Well, I mean, the, some the PKVM hypervisor. Not. Right, but the protected hypervisor could call the ACPI if it's trusted, and then it's implemented in firmware. And Maybe is it trusted? <laughs> but then it, it, you're trusting your. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I mean, I, point taken. I mean, if the device is very simple you really that you could ACPI toggle a GPIO to re clear the state, it, it, that's the best. But I, I, we haven't studied all the devices that we are going to deal with. But we think so we will run into issues there, uh, having complexity in EL2 to so handle this. I will say that a lot of people have approached me and say, we want to do a service VM. That's the best idea ever. <laughs> and I always just shake my head and say, you're crazy. I like, see. you really are. I mean, if you, if you don't trust it to be part of your actual TCB, then why is it trusted to be part of a weird special service VM that is still completely trusted, right? It, it, it yeah, I don't know. I guess microkernels or something. Okay. Uh, uh, I think I'm done. Most of the you know uh, cases, I mean scenarios that I wanted to cover, I'm done. So thanks a lot. Uh, I think there's some question there. Oh wow! Great. <laughs> <laughs> Just about the uh, PKVM, uh, I think the model we have, as you mentioned, we we trigger that from EL2, but it doesn't have to, ha to have all the logic like like complex devices in EL2. So ARM already has like uh, standards like SCMI, so you can do that in secure and secure world, and that you can handle like interrupts if like use whatever you want. But uh, we don't add any complexity in PKVM. You just have very simple interface for reset, and it can be anywhere like if the sim device is simple or maybe in secure world. Uh, are you saying the hypervisor can delegate some of the reset function to another uh, entity? Secure. Secure world, not, Secure not, world. not okay. another VM. Or um, okay, I will have to talk. I mean, I don't know if uh, our driver folks would be ready to put all their driver code in the secure world. I, I know, I know. Yeah. I mean, trust me, you know, these devices really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's literally just the power management part, which is already insecure, presumably. Yeah. Um, regarding the first part of your talk about uh, disabling the device so it's used in another VM, uh, are you aware of uh, the access controller patches that went mainline this year? It's for a simplified case where you have a firewall and or you do hardware partitioning and you want a device probe time to decide if this platform device should be handled by Linux or not. But there are patches upstream now, it's called access controller. It's a device tree thing, but I think one could build on top of that if you want to have like a runtime way to say this device is currently inaccessible. I would be able to, I would like to have that too, but not for visualization stuff. So sometimes we have like microcontrollers and they expose resets, GPIOs and so on. And if we do an in-system reset, we can't use the GPIOs and it would be nice to be able in Linux to say, okay, this device is gated off. So to have like some mechanism to say, yeah, this device is gated off and user space will do no accesses to the update and then resume work. Okay, the access control, okay, I'll talk to you offline. And, and I, I don't think I've come across that, but uh, if that can help here, that's good. Okay. I think we need to wrap up. Any other questions? If not, thank, thank you. you very much. Mm -hmm.